Artificial neural networks. What are they and how and why do they work? In a nutshell, neural networks are just function approximators. The word function is very important here because a function is a mechanism that does something with an input to get an output. If you have an image of a car, there must be a function that takes this image and predicts what type of car it is, just from those raw pixel values. If you have a text in English, there must be a function that takes this text and outputs the same text in Spanish. If you have a question, there must be a function that produces an answer. But there is a problem. In traditional programming we write functions all the time, and they are pretty powerful. But what happens when the function is so difficult that we cannot explain it? For example, when you see this digit, you know it's 5. You just know. But if you had to write an algorithm that takes this image and says it is 5, suddenly it becomes extremely hard. The task is simple, but the function that takes an image of a handwritten digit and outputs what digit that is, is extremely hard to write. So that's when machine learning becomes useful. And the idea here is simple. If you know that there must be a function that can solve this problem, but we don't know what that function is or what it looks like, maybe we can define a structure, an artificial neural network, that could learn this function. And to learn this function, we need something to learn from. That means we need data. Let's look at a very simple example. Here, you can see some data points and right away if I ask what the function that models this data would look like, you probably would imagine a curve that goes through those data points, right? This is what a neural network should also learn. It should learn to approximate the function that this data is representing. If a new x value appears, we should be able to predict the y value, even if we didn't know about this point before. So let's get back to our handwritten digits. The one you saw is taken from the famous MNIST dataset, where thousands of handwritten digits are stored with their labels, meaning that for every picture we know what digit is shown. If we want to make a model that learns from this data to be able to recognize unseen samples, we can take some ideas from the way our brain learns. And our brain has neurons, cells that get a signal at its dendrites, which are like tiny antennas picking up messages from other neurons. Inside the neuron cell body, it decides if the message is strong enough to pass on. The neuron sends the signal down a long wire called the axon, until it reaches a synapse, through which the signal is passed to other neurons. When we learn, the connections between neurons in the brain change, they become stronger, new connections are formed, and neurons become more efficient. Artificial neural networks kind of tries to simulate this process. They consist of artificial neurons, simple functions that take the values from other neurons and combine them into a signal that is passed to further neurons. In our specific case, we have an input that is 28 by 28 pixels. Each pixel value ranges from 0 to 1. Black pixels are zeros, white pixels are ones. These pixels form our input layer. Now we want to know what digit is shown, and as there are 10 possible digits, we want to produce 10 predictions or 10 scores for every image we see, so we can add 10 neurons and call it an output layer. Every input neuron will be connected to every output neuron, and we connect them with what is called weights. Every weight is simply a number, and at this point, this number can be picked randomly. Each output neuron We'll take our input values, multiply each value by the corresponding weight, and sum it up to get a new value. The idea here is that if we show our neural network digit 5, we want an output neuron representing 5 to produce very high value, and other neurons to produce low values. If we show digit 0, once again only the output neuron representing 0 should light up. And this is probably the simplest neural network we can build. But our task now is to teach this network to recognize these digits. That means we have to change the weights in a way that lets the model make better predictions. This is done by showing our model samples from our dataset and measuring how good or bad this model performs. If it makes a bad prediction, we adjust the weights a little bit. Loss functions are functions that measure how inaccurate our predictions are. 
and optimizers are other functions that find the direction in which we have to adjust the weights to make the loss function value smaller. The smaller it gets, the better our model is. And indeed, if we visualize the weights of every neuron that this model learns, we can see that although they look random at first, during training, this model begins to learn some patterns. It learns what every digit looks like. This model can learn very primitive ways to separate digits. It can model linear relationships. But if we want to perform better, we can make it deeper by adding one or more layers between our input and output layer. These additional layers are called hidden layers, and it makes our neural network deeper. That's where the term deep learning comes from. These hidden neurons do the same things as our output neurons, but each neuron has an activation function or nonlinearity that enables our model to learn more complicated functions. Coming back to our simple two-dimensional function example, activation functions would let us bend the straight line so we can model our data more accurately. There are many activation functions, but one of the simplest ones is called ReLU, or Rectified Linear Unit. It kills the negative signal and leaves the positive one, or simply put, turns negative values into zeros. Although the abilities of our model increase as we add more neurons or layers, at some point our model will stop learning. If our model is too big, it will simply memorize the training data and fail to generalize. This is known as overfitting. If our model is too simple, it won't be able to learn, and we will have a situation called underfitting. This is the main idea behind neural networks, to build algorithms that are able to learn the function from data. That's it from me for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.